All right. So we're starting our new series, The Rocks Will Cry Out. All right, let's pray. God, I just thank you so much for this moment right now, this point in time that we can't get back. Yeah. And Lord, I just ask that you would help us, Lord, to grab this moment with open arms, with hearts open wide. Say, God, what is it you want to do in my life right now? God, teach me. God, speak to my soul and transform me to be more like you and to reach out with a message of hope and love. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. So if you have, if you have, you know, version Bible app, I put some messages, uh, put the message notes on there so you can, you can uh, scroll through there. All you need to do is open up uh, your Bible app and look at events and it should just come up. If not, there's a link on our webpage under message notes if you want to do that. But, um, you know, obviously you don't have to do that, but I'm just saying, it can be helpful. You can write your own notes there. You can, you can do all sorts of things on this incredible little phone. Did you know that that um, this device that you hold in your hand, like pretty much every single device, right, that you've got, like you'd have to have a Nokia 5110 to... Do you have one of those, Steve? No, I did. It's did. Phone. <laughs> phone. You could drop it. And drop it. Nothing would happen to it because there was nothing there. <laughs> You'd have to have a Nokia 5110 to not have a computer that was more powerful, that is more powerful than the computer that was used to land on the moon. You hold in your hand a device that is more powerful than the computers they used to land a spaceship on the moon. <laughs> here's, and here's the thing. What are you, you going to do with that power? Text people, say hi. Yeah, We can do all that. We can ring people. And obviously... I'm just saying, it's powerful, isn't it? It's really powerful. And so we can use it for, just like everything, you know, the internet's not a bad thing, it's not a good thing, it's just, a, it's a thing. And it's powerful and we need to use it for good and not for evil. <laughs> right? And so it gets used for all sorts of things, right? So whatever we do, let's do it. All right, let's get into it. The rocks will cry out. All right, uh, it's uh, Luke chapter 19, if you've got the Bibles, turn there. We looked at this a little bit last week with respect to uh, kind of the end of Vision Builders. Um, But we're looking at the same passage, Luke chapter 19, and we're we're taking a different angle, a different different path. All right. So this is when uh, Jesus is entering uh, Jerusalem, kind of like for the final time, as the triumphant king, riding a humble donkey, a colt, uh, one that hadn't been ridden, before and uh, you know the palm leaves are out, the the, um, the the coats and all those sorts of things are on the on the ground as a sign of respect, and we're like, this is the king. And remember, and remember the, the, the guys were crying out. Oh, I think the rocks are going to cry out. Literally going to cry out this morning. If <laughs> remember, it says, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're crying out, Hosanna, which means save us. Save us. But it's like this, this praise, worship, uh, uh, exclamation mark kind of save us. It's this word that we can't translate properly in the English because it's kind of got this, this kind of contradictory meaning almost. Save us. I know you're going to save us. You have saved us kind of feeling about it. And it's like praise you because you have saved us, but you haven't saved us yet. Help us save us. All right? That's what that word means, which we can't. We don't have something like that in our, in our language, right? But so here we are, Luke 19, uh, verse uh, 37. Let's read what, uh, 
what the word has for us. All right, when he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of his disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Verse 38. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. We've got exclamation marks here in my Bible. And, uh, you know, they are excited. They are pumped. This is the moment. This is the moment they've been leading up to for three years, the disciples. You know, they found this guy. This is the guy. This is an awesome guy. This guy's incredible. I can't believe we found him. We found him. This is the guy. And they hang out with him for three years. He does a whole bunch of cool stuff like multiply food and, uh, you know, walk on the water and do all these crazy awesome things, heal people and, and see people get raised from the dead. Like, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? He does all these amazing, incredible things and it's all leading up to this moment for the disciples where Jesus is finally going to enter Jerusalem and proudly declare who he is to everyone. Remember there was times when Jesus said, my time hasn't come yet. I, I can't, don't, you know, he said, he healed people. He said, don't tell anyone. Could you imagine doing that? There's no preacher in the world that would heal someone and then say, don't tell anyone about our ministry. <laughs> But that's, but yeah, it's true. Those people we haven't heard of. <laughs> so, you know, like Jesus, is, he, does, he does things the opposite way to what we would often do things, doesn't he? You know, he gathers a crowd of 10,000 people and then he says, unless you eat my body, unless you drink my blood, you've got no part in being my disciple. They all disappear, except for a few. Right, it's not marketing strategy 101, Jesus, come on. That's not good. Right? Did he did he did Jesus talk to the marketing um, you know compartment of his church and say, Do you think this is a good idea? This is what I've got. I'm thinking about putting this on Instagram. What do you think? And they're like, no, nah, no, nah, it's a bad idea, Jesus. <laughs> it's a total bad idea. And here's this this time. Finally, finally he said, I'm gonna go there. And I'm going to declare who I am. And everyone knows this is the moment. This is the moment where we're going to give it to them. We're going to give it to the Romans. We're going to give it to the Pharisees. We're going to, we're going to take over. We're going to take over this place. And it's not really Jesus' plan. But this is what the disciples think. And it's at this moment that they start crying out, Hosanna. And they're saying, praise him, all that kind of stuff. And uh, in verse 40, it says, uh, on verse 39, some of the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Verse 40, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Stones will cry. This moment is so significant. I actually think, and I could be wrong, I, I don't think Jesus is talking about this metaphorically. I reckon if nobody was there, literally, those stones would have started praising him. Not in a stone way, you know, not like not, not like a rock way, like a, you know, like I'm a cool rock. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm looking cool, and you can think about me because I'm I'm like solid. You know, you can you can think of all these analogies, but I'm I'm a, I'm a stone. You know that big that big rock at uh, uh, Redhead. You know, same rocks they threw at you. Yeah, that big that big rock that just stands out there. You know, there's the there's the beautiful there's the the beautiful waves coming through and the incredible sand, and they just see this this crazy rock that just is there, just declaring yeah. in a rock way, God is awesome. Our cave. At Caves Beach, it just declares, I'm awesome. You know, God, God is awesome. That's what it's declaring. But this is, I think in this day, I think in this passage, this is just my own personal opinion, that those rocks were literally going to start singing. Potentially the first rock in the world ever. Come on, The rolling stones, rock and rolling stones. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? All right, what well, Cole, Cole, you've got a terrible joke, I'm sure. No, same rocks they threw at him, huh? 
Same rocks they threw at him, yeah, you're right. Well, Rellos are the other rocks. Yeah, they're related. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cousin over there. Cousin, cousin Rock is worshipping God and, and uh, the other one's attacking him. All right, fantastic. Now, I, I want to suggest this morning as we start this, this kind of journey through the rocks will cry out, the stones will cry out, that you were born to worship. You were created to worship. What have we got here, Josh? Oh, sweet. My notes. That's awesome. Well done, Josh. <laughs> Alright, if it all falls apart from now on, you know that. It's better though. It's finally good to know who actually writes your song. Yes. <laughs> Josh has incredible messages stored up inside of him. And I just... uh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. All right, now I've lost my spot, because I've actually got notes now. I printed them off this morning. See what happened? I printed them off this morning. Goes to the printer. Printer's downstairs. And uh, Belle must have printed off some stuff too. And I didn't bother picking up. Like, I can't say she stole my notes, because I didn't even look for them. I just left home. <laughs> so, but obviously she's picked them up in, uh, in, in her kids' church stuff. Anyway, where are we? We're born to worship, that's right, okay. We're born to worship. Um, I actually think it's the most important thing in every life. It's actually the most important thing. And I want to, like, have you guys heard of the idea of special revelation versus general revelation? Have you heard of that before? The theological idea, we get taught this in Bible college, is that uh, general revelation is it's like it's there for everybody. Right, so every the revelation being revealed, something is being told to you, or you know, there's a secret of some sort that's being you know shown to you, revealed to you. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. All right. Now, a general revelation is things like um, you know the the, the na- nature. Right, we all get to see that. It speaks to us, and we all get to see it and go, "Wow, that's pretty awesome." And, and something happens where we go, I wonder if something created that. That's, that's a general revelation type thing. Another general revelation, at least for, um, for many people in the world, not everybody in the entire world, has, not everyone has actually heard this. But this is still kind of considered to be general revelation because it's not, it's not for you specifically, it's for us. It's for everyone. It's actually for every believer. All right, so the Word of God here, the Bible, is general revelation. And then, and then we have specific revelation, like what is God saying to you or to us as a church? And that's quite specific. Okay? General revelation is, I, I believe that what God is saying through the, through the Bible is that we're all born to worship. It's your number one priority in life. It really should be number one priority in life. And, uh, you know, your, your specific task in life might, might, might be different from mine. So some are called to be teachers, some are called to be apostles. You know, as it says in Ephesians 4, 11, some are called to be Pastors, and some are called to be evangelists, some are called to be administrators, some are called to be um, people who encourage other people, some are called to etc. etc. Right? Some are called to be business people, some are called to be a mum. Some are called to be the list is endless, right? And and obviously it's not just one thing, you know, like we, we can do more than one thing. But there's specific things that God wants to say to you. And I want to just I want to encourage you, find out what that is. Find out what that is. Like when you find what that is, it will just it'll make you come alive. In a way that you won't have that that life without that. You need to find that. But then there is the general revelation. This is for every single person. 
Number one priority, worship God. And there are so many reasons to do it. One, because he's worth it. That's number one. Here's what the Colossians uh, 1.16 says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. So things you can see, things you can't see, things that scientists can see, things that scientists can't see. I'm talking about microscopes, I'm talking about infrared, I'm talking about whatever. There's things that we cannot see. He created that too. There's stuff that we're going to find out maybe in 300 years from now. He created that as well. Everything has been created by him. And it says also um, it's been through him and it's for him. We all declare, you're amazing. When you look at me and try not to sin, if you're a lady. That's, that's probably more for Belle, isn't it? When she looks at me and goes, wow, look at that incredible human being there. That's not sin. That's not sin. <laughs> and she can, she can go, praise the Lord. Right? Now, the point is, the point is we are, I'm just, I'm, I'm, it's a joke, but I'm, but I'm saying we are, his, as Belle was saying before, we are his most amazing creation. So as you look at that beautiful, incredible sunset, I was just with Mez on, on uh, Monday night and there was this incredible sunset. We, just, we both just finished teaching and came out. And Mez, Mez, I think, just loves looking at creation. and She loves like giving glory to God as soon as she sees it. She walks out and goes, oh, Glenn, you've got to come and see this. And it was this sunset. And she's just like, she's just like isn't God amazing? Isn't God amazing? You're more amazing than that sunset. He created you and he loves you. And you know what? He's worth worshipping just because of that. Apart from the fact that he died on the cross for us and did things that he shouldn't have to do, things that he doesn't have to do. All right, that's, that's, that's the first thing. Um, I want to also say that um, it's actually a commandment too. We're actually commanded to worship God. And why does God command anything? For our own good. That's right. He's not ego. He, he doesn't have an issue with his ego. Like he knows he's God. He doesn't need to be worshipped. It's not about him. Us worshipping him is not about him. He's, he's quite confident in who he is. You know, he created the entire universe. He's okay. He's, he's got a cover. It's actually about us. I mean, obviously, there's, there's, there's an element of God in there, but he's not, doing, he's not doing it. He doesn't command us to worship him just because, you know, he's feeling a bit low today. All right? Um, the Ten Commandments. What are the, what are the, anyone remember some of the Ten Commandments? Yes, one. Let's see if we get all ten. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the Lord your God. Well, yes, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm summing them up. We'll just sum them up. Don't go there yet. We'll just sum them up in a second. Kill. Murder. Don't murder, you mean. <laughs> no other gods. No other gods. No other gods. Graven image. Covered, no coveting. Graven image. Graven image. So idols. Six. Which one was that, Dharma? On your father and mother. Yes. First one, the promise. Actually, it talks about long life. Um, what, um, and anyway, so the point is, there's a few, isn't it? Keep the Sabbath. False witness. There's ten. False witness. We're almost there. False witness. Nine. Come on, we've got to get the last one. Adultery. Adultery. That's right. Do not commit adultery. All right, we've got them. All ten. It's good that was last. All right. Very hard. So that's in Exodus. 19, chapter 19, and uh, the first four, the first four all relate to God. God. The next six relate to us and other people. Yeah. Right? So the don't murder a bit, you know, it's about other people, right? The first four, love God, don't put anything else before Him, you know, 
keep the Sabbath holy. Those, those first four are all about us and him. And then the next six are about us. Okay? Interesting, isn't it? Then, in Matthew 22, if you, want to, if you turn there quick enough, you get to see this one. You might know this already. Matthew 22, it says, uh, in verse 34, it says, Love the Lord your God. The Lord your God. With all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. Your mind strength. All right. <laughs> so, that's the first, Jesus, so Jesus says that's the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbour as yourself. First four, love God with everything you've got. It's helpful, isn't it? The next six, love your neighbour as yourself. Um, it continues on, and Jesus says in verse 40, all the law and the prophets, so that's more than just the Ten Commandments we're talking about here. We're talking about like 640 something, I think 643 commandments in the Old Testament, including, you know, don't eat bacon and things like that. That's been changed. Can I just say that? And we all say, Amen. 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 <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, that's, that's, that's why it's been changed, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying Amen to that. All right. So there's, there's, there's a few things that have been changed, there's a few things that haven't been changed, but Jesus fulfilled them all anyway. And, and the point is, the point is there are things that we are meant to do, and, and, and the, the, the loving God is the number one thing. All right, it's the, it's the commandment. All right. So you're born to worship. Um, he's worth it. It's our number one commandment. And uh, I want to also say it transforms you. Worship transforms you. And uh, if you turn to uh, 2 Corinthians, let's have a look at this one. 2 Corinthians 3. It, worshipping him actually transforms you. Um, I'm going to go from verse 7. Now, if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came from glory so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory fading though it was. Will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? He's talking about the Old Testament law and he's talking about how the Israelites when, when Moses handed down the, the law from God the Israelites couldn't actually look at his face and they're like saying cover your face up this is Moses, cover your face up Moses, we can't even handle this he covers up his face and this is the this is the this is the spirit of the law kind of the, the which brought death, not because it was God bringing death, but because we brought death through not being able to obey the law, right? So he he talks about that, and, and then says, "Will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that condemns men is glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious is now no glory now in comparison." With the surpassing glory, it's greater. It's greater. And if what was fading away came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Oh, this is this is this is worthwhile spending time in His presence just for this, guys. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. Right, it's a spiritual watch. This is why we pray. It is not being removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Anyone, anyone can resonate to the fact that when you gave your life to Christ, things were taken away. You start to understand things. You start to reveal things. Everything kind of makes sense. Um, but whenever... Anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, 
which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. When you worship Him, you spend time in His presence. When you spend time in His presence, you start to become like Him. He transforms us. It's like older couples who wear the same tracksuits. They start to look like the same piece, people as they, as, they, as they get older. Germans. 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 Husband and wife always have the same parker. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Germany. You can tell people that are married, even in a crowd, because they've got the same parker. Yeah. Same parker. I've always yeah. seen partners. Exactly. They've got the same partners. Parker. I'm like, yeah, Jack. 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 well, they're married to each other. <laughs> I don't know why. Same parkers. Yeah. All right. Same trackies. All right, in Australia. I don't know if you've seen that before, but you know. Got the same trackies. They went to, they went to Big W together and they bought the same trackies. No. <laughs> Haven't seen that. Hopefully you don't see it too often. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, just you know, using that as a funny illustration, what I'm trying to say is the more time you spend with someone, the more time you become alike, don't you? Yeah. It's called mirroring. Yeah. And, and the more time we spend with him, and we do that through worship and prayer, the more we become like him. So number one, we're born to worship. Number two, um, we are, I forgot number two, it's not even on my notes. not going to help me, is it? We are. We are commanded to worship. That's right. Number three, transform you. Transform you. All right. I want to say one last thing on worship. Worship keeps you thinking straight. Romans uh, chapter one is actually very specific about it. Worship keeps you thinking straight. So in Romans, uh, just after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Acts. We have um, Paul uh, from. Amen. <laughs> Maybe we should. Do you think we should try and beat them? Should we do that? Ready? One, two, three. Cora's in the middle of this. <laughs> Get, she's trying to make a beautiful morning tea for us and she's getting hammered. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, it says this in, in uh, verse 20. Uh, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are with no excuse. Yeah. And talk a little bit about that in the coming weeks. And we're going to look at some of that creation. Which, when you look at it closer, you think, wow. Wow, you're right. There is no excuse. Stop. Can I encourage you this afternoon? Stop. Look around. It's not hard in Swansea to do that, is it? You know? You're not in where I grew up in Walking Hills. It's okay. The Swansea's a lot better. <laughs> in terms of beauty. You know, the beauty of the nature around you, right? Okay. So, um... Verse 21, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. Here's a great idea, let's make something and then start worshipping. It's totally the wrong way around, isn't it? We make something and worship it. It's actually we're meant to worship the being who made us. It's completely the opposite. And uh, but we and, and and don't think you know. I know that you guys don't you know create idols. We're well, probably not creating idols. We've got you know little idols set up at home and you're worshiping uh, um, those little those little gods and stuff like that. But don't forget that the New Testament actually talks about anything you put in front of God is really an idol. Any relationship you put in front of God is an idol. I was just talking with someone this morning. They said they said to their husband, "You come second. <laughs> husband's not a big fan of that. But the husband's like, 
you know, this person's just like, well, you know what? You come second. God's first. You're second. A good second. A good second. And in fact, it actually would help you to be a better partner. That's, I mean, that's the reality of it. You know, if I'm loving God, my relationship with my children is going to be so much better than if I'm not. That second would be better than the other first. That's true, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You put somebody else first, then that's it's not as good as the it's second. Not as good. It just doesn't sound as great, does it? But reality is, it's actually, it's, it's, the, it's the right, it's the bomb. Put God first. Everything flows from that. All right, so here, here it's saying that in verse 25, just, just, just a little bit longer, therefore God gave them over in the sinful desires of their heart to sexual impurity for the grain of their bodies. And it continues to go on. Um, I'm just going to go down a little bit further. Um, there's some very politically incorrect uh, um, passages uh, just here. <laughs> just as we go further down, I just want to go to a list of Verse 29, they had become filled with every kind of wickedness. Uh, verse 28, furthermore, since they did not think it was worth while to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They had become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossipers, slanders, got haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They invent ways of doing evil. Isn't that incredible? I mean, this is us, right? This isn't them. This is us. Without God, this is us. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they do not continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. Here's the thing. When you don't worship the Lord, our thinking can get all messed up. And then you're on a pathway to whatever. Who knows? Once 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 that's there, I mean your path this this is this this thing of worship is so important. And I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say your 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 there your heart cries out to worship. And if you don't worship God, you will worship something. If you don't worship God, you'll worship something. And every single person in this planet has a desire to worship. And that's why there is millions of different religions in the world. That's why atheists, even, will find something to worship. They won't say they're worshipping that. But there is a God of money, isn't there? There is a God of success, of, of, uh, there is, there's a God of lust, there's a God of, there's a God of all sorts of things. A God of knowledge, yeah. And those, those things, if you don't worship the real Lord, the true, the one God, you're going to get off track. And that's, I think that, that's a message that we need to get out there. It's a message we need for ourselves. Even, it's a daily message we need. But it's also a message we've got to get out there. Because we want to love people. We want to, we want to, we want to share with people how amazing God is. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to go on this journey. I'm excited about going on this journey. I think this is my most favourite topic ever, is the topic of worshipping God. And uh, it's going to be fantastic. We were going to do a quick song. But I don't know if we, we have time. What's five minutes? Should we do it? Let's do it. All right, good on it. We're going to get spent a little bit of time worshiping, and then we're going to continue our worship by eating the beautiful food that Cora has. Um, I don't know if that's worship, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> it's a sacrifice to the Lord. And also, I want to pray for anyone who's, uh, who's struggling. I know there's, a, there's someone who we're going to pray for today. But if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, too, we want that as well. But come forward and pray for you. We've got something in your body that you need healed. Let's, let's, let's see God come and touch that and change that situation and circumstance.